welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel and Happy New Year. The astrological New Year, Aries season, the spring equinox, and the new moon in Aries all sync up with each other this year. And that is because this new moon is happening at the critical zero degree point. And it's a sort of rare, powerful portal for new beginnings because of this alone. But additionally, because the power planets Saturn and Pluto are newly transitioned into new signs, where they are also at the zero degree point and aspecting this new moon. So there's no exaggeration about this being a powerful portal for rebirth, creative and realistic new beginnings, and successful transformation of things within yourself and in your life. And this significance is symbolized by many different esoteric synchronicities and astrological details. For instance, this Aries new moon connects with Mercury, Neptune, Saturn, Pluto, the North Known, and Venus, right? And it also activates these critical zero degree points in Aries, Pisces, and Aquarius. These signs of bringing creative inventions and spiritual embodiments to life. And because of this, it also brings to light the significance of the esoteric meaning of the number zero, which is also aligned. And... Because Saturn and Pluto figure strongly in the new moon astrology as well, the significance of Saturn and Pluto being these planets of personal, spiritual, and societal transformation, power, and impact, and also these power planets of karmic rewards, gains, and losses, that also has a significant meaning here. So we're going to get into all of this, but for a full astrology breakdown on the March astrology and the significance of Saturn and Pluto's big transitions into new signs this month, that includes personalized oracle advice about how Saturn and Pluto in this month's astrology mark the end of a 15-year Saturnian rulership cycle and initiate these huge energy shifts and changes in your personal lives and the world, check out the highlighted video and your March 2023 horoscopes on the channel. In those videos, I go into more detail about how particular planetary movements before and after the new moon contribute to this new moon being so incredibly powerful, right, as this sort of portal for rebirth, for dimensional divides as well, and for long-term success of any new projects that you launch at this time, including any new relationships or a lifestyle, body, or even mindset transformations that you initiate in your life at this time. So take a minute to like this video. And subscribe to the channel and let's get into the new moon astrology, the channel psychic messages, and the transformative new beginnings it could be activating in your life so you can best work with these energies. The astrology during the first half of March has essentially orchestrated lots of karmic conflicts and revelations and emotional triggers and emotional release, right? That has been the sort of lead up to this powerful new moon portal. And truly that just kind of re-emphasizes how this portal is sort of divinely aligned to now spark resolutions, um, karmic closures, and then these new beginnings, right? But especially a sort of mindful and matured personal and professional evolution and matriculation, right? Based on a sort of humility that has developed, right? After Saturn, <laughs> you know, has brought all sorts of lessons for the last 15 years, right? And also based on, you know, honest self-audit and just integrating 
all that the last 15 years and any recent conflicts has taught you, right? So that you can begin a new journey, right? But a new journey that is still about continued learning and mastery by being an experienced beginner, right? In certain areas of your life and where you will most likely be recommitting to certain things, right? And this is emphasized by the cards and the stars, okay? So Taking a look at the cards here, the image of this specific Seven of Pentacles card from this deck is what kept popping into my head as the sort of collective psychic message that was being channeled, right, related to this Aries New Moon astrology. And it quite literally symbolizes, you know, being at this crossroads in a cosmic portal, right? And after years of personal professional development, planting seeds, building foundations, and gaining a new understanding of who you truly are, what you have to offer, and what transformed visions you have for your life and also gaining the literacies in whatever industry you're in to make those visions come to life based on you entering this new phase of life this new year in this spring equinox portal quite literally like this page of pentacles here where you're supported by these new moon and airy season energies but embodying a certain newfound confidence a newfound knowledge um, and a higher self-connection and self-mastery right from all that you have learned over the last 10 plus years and you know, in this spread, this page is also the Eight of Pentacles, right? Someone who is experienced even as they're entering into a new cycle, right? Just newly leveled up. And in general, Aries is the sign of independence. It's the sign of creative new beginnings and original ideas and just new birth and the spark of life. And it's in opposition to the sign Libra, which is correlated with relationships, partnerships, and a life of ease, right? And so this Seven of Pentacles imagery also symbolizes this particular opposition between Aries and Libra as well, with the Three of Pentacles imagery being present in this card as well, right? So we have the Seven Flowers here in terms of this long journey of nurturing, planting seeds, harvesting things. Um, but they're holding these three flowers, which are supposed to be these three pentacles in hand, while there are also three pentacles overhead, right? And um, this is about how these journeys of personal and professional development and getting clear on your visions of yourself and your success have also entailed like some important lessons in your relationships and collaboration, right? And, you know, this card symbolizes both the end of certain personal professional relationships or senses of identity that you may have held on to sort of based on you seeking acceptance perhaps, but that you've now outgrown. And where now like new relationships, contracts, professional opportunities, and technologies even are appearing in divine timing for you to take projects and businesses to the next level, right? To newly launch or initiate certain visionary ideas and even to relaunch certain things with a renewed vision and strategy for success. That's very much what the Three of Pentacles is all about. It's very much about uh, collaboration. And it's also about all of the work that you do um, in preparation, right? And for some of you, this is about strengthening some personal and professional relationships based on being able to renegotiate the contractual terms and just even the dynamics, right? To sort of reflect your personal evolution or even the evolution of a business's brand, 
rate. For some of you, it symbolizes matriculation in some type of educational program, um, maybe some upcoming learning and teaching and speaking opportunities. And for the collective as a whole, it also represents experimentation with new technologies and social media. Given that Jupiter is in Aries and Pluto is entering Aquarius, right, and sextiling this new moon. And as a result, we are seeing that most media conglomerates are in more direct competition with each other. They have released new products and will continue to transform truly in ways that will change how we all are sort of forced to interact with social media and marketing and sales channels, right? To make a living, to maintain relationships, etc. So this is all reflected in the cards and the astrology, but even on a more sort of prophetic and esoteric level, the cards in the new moon portal in particular are also sort of um, speaking of the great divides and the splitting of the earth and how even though, right, this has been something that's been talked about for a long time and especially in the last few years of sort of accelerated spiritual awakening and accelerating uh, conflict, um, the astrology of this new year and it being marked by this new moon portal at the critical zero degree is truly, um, I think, bringing karma and cosmic law down um, truly now. <laughs> And especially in terms of knowing what the astrology of the next few years is looking like, I'm definitely seeing the cards and the astrology of this new moon portal as significant and signaling, you know, the great divide and the splitting of the earth and, you know, you being able to tell more concretely those who are aligned with creating new earth, those who are, who, who will be able to <laughs> continue to ascend and have a place in new earth um, versus those who will continue to be mired in, you know, lower dimensional and lower vibrational um sorts of dealings right and, and ways of being and even uh sort of networks right and i'm getting with this that you know this new moon in particular sparks a particular turning point for light workers in terms of them being supported in their assignments here in really new ways um so for instance um, if you feel like, you know, things have become humdrum, there's no creativity, no excitement, nothing new that's happening in the collective, everything's really boring, um, it's because there is a collective of light workers here that have been hidden um, in hermit mode, who have been gaining their wings, right? until this portal where they're being rebirthed to really carry out and bring to life certain visions for new earth and new ways of being. Um, like that's what I'm getting with this. And that's something that is going to be happening now. So while this is a time of sort of like everyone really being rebirthed, rebirth and being able to rise like a phoenix in a very real sense of coming to life after this long Saturnian age, there are levels. <laughs> and this is a sort of messiah portal to be quite be quite honest, given the critical zero degree where um these activations and these mystical signs are about also activating the gods among us, right? That there are gods who have been hidden, hidden among us that will be coming on the scene, hidden in plain sight. <laughs> um, and, you know, in varying degrees of like, uh, aware of visibility, right? Because they have divine protection so that they can carry out their missions in terms of the things that they're co-creating with source. Um, 
But that's absolutely something that I'm getting with this. And I'm seeing it in the cards in terms of this, this queen of voices for me is really that card that is symbolizing this sort of rising like a phoenix, phoenix right from, <clears throat> from the fire, especially as it's next to this sun card in reverse, right? But if you look at this page of pentacles here, um, it is directly above the high priestess in reverse, which is about this sort of like ascent or this sort of um, birthing of this, of like divine beings, quite literally, right? Um, these people who have these sort of divine assignments with, with the divine and, and who are here to appear as these sort of God beings who are here to activate the collective, to build new things and to bring in a new energy, right? And some, some, some of you, you know who you are and, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, people being chosen and this and that. And it's like, we'll see right but but that is absolutely something that's happening and you know who you are right um but that is absolutely something that's happening and that is very much what that zero degree of aries is all about um in terms of the uh sort of sabian for the zero degree of aries it's it's literally about um a sort of mermaid figure, right? <laughs> Coming up from the depths of the ocean and um, making contact with, with like a whale or a seal or a, a mystical sea creature, right? And it's really about these beings who, who embody this sort of realm of potentiality, the essence, the seed of incarnation and, um, God power, essentially, to create, right? And to bring in energy into the material, into the physical, and into reality, right? And Aries in general um, is that sign that is about, um, it rules the head, but as the first sign um, that comes after the sign of Pisces, it is also about um embodying the eye of God. It is connected to the pineal gland. It is connected to higher knowledge and having that innately in, in, in an embodied way. It is about this ability to embody ancient wisdom and also to espouse that and merge that with new creative and intuitive knowledge, right? Um, modern knowledge. And those will be the new things that are <laughs> rising and that will be blessed and emerging among us. So as we take a look at the astrology for the last two weeks, we get a sense here of how this astrology um, is really bringing in all that newness, that great new energy, right? We had Saturn enter Pisces on the 7th, but in terms of the critical sort of turning point in the energy, right, um, from March 15th to 16th, we have Mercury and the Sun making that conjunction with Neptune in the last decan while it is on the way to Aries, right? And then on the 16th, Venus enters Taurus and it is exalted there in Taurus. And it is also going to be conjuncting the North Node. The North Node is in those first few degrees of Taurus right now, right? And so this is a time when things might feel a little hazy, but also where you are maybe feeling really creative, right? And um, where you are essentially clarifying your vision, right? Based on so many different things that you have learned and that have come to light, um, certain things that you are trying to resolve. And then Mercury and the sun enter Aries, right? Um, and we have that new moon in spring equinox at that critical zero degree where Mercury, the sun, and the moon are all conjunct with each other. Also making a loose conjunction with Neptune as well. And then with Pluto entering Aquarius um, just two days later, 
It means that all of these celestial bodies are making a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius at that critical zero degree. So taking a look at all of the different new moon aspects, all of the different ways that the planets, the celestial bodies are connecting with each other here. It really just gives you an idea of how truly blessed <laughs> this uh, particular portal is for manifestation, for initiating things with confident action and sort of making a game plan, a strategy about how to bring your dreams to life and also make incredible financial gains. So this new moon is especially good for cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorns. Also for the fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And also for the Mercury ruled signs, Gemini and Virgo. Um, given that after this new moon, um, Mercury becomes visible finally on the 26th while Mercury is still in Aries. And right before it makes this conjunction, with Jupiter. Okay, so this astrology is a recipe for receiving good news, creative ideas and opportunities, um, resolving certain situations or conflicts, having clarity around your identity, your purpose, future direction, and where you stand in certain relationships. Also, it's about action. It's all about action and actualizing your dreams. And this is courtesy of Saturn and Pisces. Where Saturn's particular um, aspects in this new moon are all about providing practical structure to your dreams, right? Um, in addition to the fact that um, we have an abundance of planets in Aries, while Mars, which is the ruler of Aries, is also moving into the cardinal sign of cancer, right? So again, this is all about action. It's all about actualizing your dreams with determination and a realistic strategic plan, right? And you could be starting things related to, um, you could be starting things, initiating things, but also receiving good news related to, you know, travel plans, educational plans. You could be coming into just a more empowered sense of self. You could be initiating valuable relationships and connections with wise people and social groups. This is a good time for signing contracts, making pitches and career moves, and also launching things related to music, spirituality, wellness, fashion, and beauty. In general, it's a great time for launches, right? Whether it's launching something new or even relaunching and restocking things, right? And sending out those restock announcements and um, launching communications and marketing campaigns using social media and sales channels, right? Because this is also a time where so much of the astrology in terms of the um, fixed stars even that are being activated um, and other things that are being activated when you go deeper and deeper into this astrology, it indicates that um, this is a time where you could actually experience surprises with finances in terms of big gains, right? Um, that help point the way forward, right? But in general, it's a time of clarity around what you will divest from and what you will invest in, right? And that's your loyalties and your values included. And just hopefully having a sense of best actionable steps to build toward a legacy of some sort. And this is also all represented by the way that these key celestial players are all sort of activating a sort of quadrant in the chart where they're all sort of placed, stationed, and moving in succession, right? Right after each other, they're moving in succession as well. And so this is, again, one of those things that just emphasizes how this is about taking steps and how the, how the astrology is actually supporting you taking steps to build things. So like we see here, immediately after this new moon, we have Mars moving into Cancer, right? Which 
is also um, a cardinal sign and where this is about you having an ability to channel and express your emotions and ideas effectively to really reach people, right? And to attract outcomes and bring long-term results that you desire um, in your work and in your love relationships and your career. Because when Mars moves into Cancer, it's going to trine Saturn and Pisces, okay? And then in general, right, after Mars moves into you know, another cardinal sign. Um, we have Mercury becoming visible and moving towards this conjunction with Jupiter, right? So it's great for marketing, starting new things, receiving great news and clarity, um, maybe even receiving visas, spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation, uh, study or work abroad opportunities, um, receiving news on applications and pitches, and just generally a great time to put your best foot forward and uh, launch things that will potentially um, be positive for long-term success, right? And um, even the fixed stars that are being sort of activated in this astrology point to good fortune and even fame and just um, a lot of gains and finances from business and um, any sales and marketing efforts, right? And again, you can keep in mind that the North Node and Venus are in conjunction in Taurus, right? So exalted in the sign of money, fashion, beauty, right? And making great connections and having success in relationships and even romance, right? So I mentioned that there is a very deep spiritual and symbolic meaning to this portal and how it's reflected in the card symbolizing the cosmic portal and where this sort of esoteric and symbolic meaning of this zero point is just really salient, okay? The zero point represents rebirth, creativity, infinite potential, and it's also coming through here in the astrology as, you know, connecting to this infinite potential for gains in the marketplace and creating things that last. And so I just want to read here what the sort of spiritual and esoteric meaning of zero is, especially as it is um, so salient in these critical zero degrees being activated in these really spiritual um, and mystical signs that are related to invention and high spiritual energies of creation. So the number zero relates to prayer and source. It relates to eternity, the beginning point, infinity, oneness, wholeness, continuing cycles, flow, the God force, and universal energies. Zero is the alpha and omega. The number zero encompasses the attributes of all other numbers. Alpha is the beginning and omega is the highest as there is no beginning and no end. So all is infinite. And the ancients proclaimed that the God force is a circle whose center is everywhere and its circumference is nowhere. So all numbers with the zero puts one closer to the God force or universal energy. The number zero stands for potential and or choice. Its message has to do with developing one's spiritual aspects. It represents the beginning of a spiritual journey and highlights the uncertainties that that can entail. But it's about listening to your intuition and higher self to find your answers, right? And it's a message to listen for guidance and to watch out for signs. And I think especially because we have um, Mercury here conjunct with this new moon and then making a uh, conjunction with Jupiter, you will most likely be seeing signs, right? So pay attention, follow guidance, 
act on your instincts and also act in alignment with the cosmic energies at this time for your best interests and for highest outcomes. Okay. And lastly, there was a channeled angel number message that came through for the collective for this Aries new moon. And that angel number is the number 844. And so I'm going to read this to you in terms of what the sort of angelic insight is. Angel number 844 brings a message from the angels to see yourself in a higher light as your true self and as a divine being. Eight is the number of karma and universal spiritual law of cause and effect. It is also about self-confidence and personal authority and discernment and higher wisdom and achievement and successes, but also practicality and the considerations of giving and receiving and serving humanity. While the number four is about your effort and your will, and your persistence, and having realistic values in order to stabilize the things that you build. It's about building solid foundations and from there achieving success and positive results. And so when it is emphasized doubly here, it is absolutely about the energies of the archangels also being with you to help you build. And I would say that that is, you could say that that is about, um, you know, spiritual support, but also the celestial body supporting the work that you're here to do and the things that you can build as well from a solid foundation. All right. And so 844 is, says you have a lot of work to do in this lifetime and your angels fully encourage and support you. Your divine life mission requires that you be your authentic self and work at your most brilliance in order to achieve success on all levels. Yes, Aries is all about authenticity, right? And working from that space of authentic, creative brilliance. 844 encourages you to work towards achieving a deepening personal growth and to allow it to extend and expand to benefit others as well as yourself. Nurture, nourish, and embrace your passions and interests and exceed your personal boundaries. Know that you are capable of doing remarkable things and being a positive beacon of light for others. This number, 844, acknowledges and recognizes the discipline and hard work you have put into achieving your goals and aspirations. Your determination and efforts have been well worth your while and your angels encourage you to keep up the great work in order to achieve and attain your desired results and outcomes. It says live with conscious awareness, self-responsibility and wholeness and take the necessary steps to achieve your desired results on all levels incredible incredibly aligned so let's get into what this aries new moon is spotlighting for you according to your sun moon and rising sign especially look at your rising sign hello dear aries happy new year it is your season and happy birthday to any aries here so the seeds that you have planted and watered in your career have had varying amounts of success over the last 10 years for a number of reasons, right? Some things were very successful. Some things that you had hoped for were stalled, averted, and crashed and burned, all for you to clarify your core values and to rethink any limited visions of your potential and any codependencies and loyalties that would lead you nowhere. You were truly forced to look at the limitations of certain networks and certain partnerships and how these all reflected a fractured self-concept and sense of self-worth, right? And for some of you, you may still be in these scenarios and experiencing stagnation from refusing to clear any karma or get clarity around any delusions, right? For others of you, 
these certain rejections were protections and hardships were divine redirections, right? That were a part of an accelerated path of spiritual growth that ultimately aligned you with a unique higher vision and higher knowledge, right? Around how to materialize these visions. And as a ram, you could only attain these understandings through butting your head in trial and error, right? So that you understand your strength and your willpower to create and manifest. And so that you also took some temporary losses for higher lessons. And sometimes that's the only way that you all learn, but it's also sometimes the only path for an innovator, right? Someone who is blazing a new trail that was never walked before. It's like when you are someone who is doing that, then you are the one who has to go through all of the hardships, who has to essentially clear away all of the weeds and, you know, bump into all of the walls and crash through all of the glass ceilings, right? And you all have come to see the potential limitations and meanings of a lot of these sort of hardships and divine detours in your professional ventures now. And especially certain professional partnerships with clarity, you understand them with clarity in a way that gives you resolution, right? For how you are revamping, renegotiating, and managing your professional entrepreneurial life in a way that truly honors your independence and your new sense of identity and self-worth. And that also honors your ownership and benefit from what it is that you offer. Okay. And this new moon blesses you. It blesses your ventures and old ones that you are reimagining and that will create long-term success with the use of new media and sales channels and technology in general and even selective partnerships that you use to release your unique ideas and creations. And with all of this, you are asked to just take advantage of this incredible cosmic energy energy and release the things that you are meant to release, initiate the things that you are meant to initiate, take the things that you are already doing to the next level. And when you do so, your reach, your net worth, and success are poised to rise to heights beyond your dreams and blaze a trail. Happy New Year, Taurus. So this new moon touches your 11th and 12th houses and sparks a journey of more mindfulness in your associations and relationships in all areas of your life, but especially professionally as you continue to widen your reach, your connections, and secure public success in your industry through publishing and online channels. And with this new moon, you may be getting clarity on where you stand with some of the figures in your industry, clarity on who you can and can't trust, and clarity on a practical strategy for reaching some dream or goal. This new moon asks you to move from a space of authenticity so you can keep attracting abundance, and it asks you to trust your intuition with any creative ideas. This new moon supports you continuing to deepen your self-love, to rest, and to heal. And it supports deeper self-discovery, self-study, mastery, and success with any projects in music, psychology, healing arts, and your public communications. Geminis, this new moon is cosmically aligned to support the release and success of creative projects through sales and social media channels. It is such a great time for you to launch projects, right? It's a great time to really rethink and renew your image and branding and marketing strategies as these can majorly impact the success of your projects. Projects involving art, music, education, 
vacation and foreign travel will be especially blessed during this time and just from this point forward. Um, and they will broaden your market reach, enrich you with knowledge, and enrich you financially and set you up for a new phase of success in your career. Happy New Year, Cancers. So your finances and market reach continue to be blessed at this time. This new moon is all about rewards, awards, and recognition in the public related to product development, entertainment, media, tech, writing, publishing, higher learning, spirituality, wellness, and psychology, and your financial growth, and even your appearance, and just in general, about the public success of you continuing to monetize all that you know and capitalize off of your creativity, your networks, expand your market reach and partnerships and connections, okay? And the cosmos just continue to shine a light on your matriculation in this sort of long journey in art and entertainment, in a spiritual initiation, in exploration and self-mastery and healing from trauma and just how it has all brought you such a wealth of knowledge and that is paying off in the sort of milestones that you are achieving in your career. And while this new moon asks you to continue exploring knowledge about psychology, about health, about psychic gifts in the supernatural, so that you understand more deeply your own spiritual experiences, your creative and intuitive and manifesting abilities, and the projects that you create and share with the world. Happy New Year, Leos. So this new moon shines a light on publishing launches, tours, travel, link-ups, and rewards and recognition in your career. It really spotlights the mysteriousness of what professional moves you will make next and the potential upcoming gains from the beginning of new ventures or a level up in your career. These gains being financial and in the form of blessed new connections and expanded market reach. It's a great time to launch new projects and see rewards from any ventures related to music, fashion, beauty, travel, higher education, research, creative marketing, and for you to be really empowered and discerning in any business and contract negotiations. Happy new moon, Virgos. So this new moon is all about dynamics of care in the areas of marriage, your intimate and professional relationships, uh, pregnancy and childbirth, maternal care, child care, uh, medical operations, um, and recovery, being in the helping professions, even negotiating how much you own and share of yourself physically, emotionally, and financially and experiencing psychological transformations from trauma that you experience or witness. Um, this astrology is really spotlighting transformation of your beliefs related to any sort of crisis or trauma experiences, and um, also any outside knowledge or wisdom from higher education and personal research, or even just intuitive revelation or spiritual awakening that you experience. This new moon continues to open your mind, but ultimately to gift you with faded resolutions, helpers, teachers, wisdom, and advisors. Happy new moon, Libras. So Libras, this new moon is shining a light on your romantic and professional relationships and desires and what you want your legacy and your workplace or collegiate dynamics to be. 
be. It's all about your sister sign this month, <laughs> which means a spotlight on any sort of shadow aspects, perhaps. But this is truly a time of ending, beginning, and troubleshooting any issues in committed love, co-parenting, creative, and business partnerships, and reimagining and revising projects. Romantically, though, Someone new could grab your attention and spark a rise in your libido or be a source of creative inspiration. And with this particular astrology, and I'm saying this quite literally as it is 5.55 on the clock, okay? This, with this astrology, if there is any sort of love interest that is catching your eye with this astrology, this could be some sort of faded connection, some sort of faded and deep love connection, especially because it is happening at the time that uh, Venus is in Taurus and making a conjunction with the North Node. Okay, so this could be someone that changes your life. <laughs> Take care. Happy New Year, Scorpios. So this new moon brings new commitments and opportunities in your romantic and creative entrepreneurial and professional life that will stabilize your material and financial life while it brings a bit more play and lightheartedness into your life as well. The astrology points to new work opportunities for you to work with children, spend more time with children or pets, nature, um, travel, and working remotely, and to do something just more creative, spiritual, and entrepreneurial. You're encouraged to just really choose peace and to let things leave you and to put yourself out there to create and take advantage of new opportunities that are truly more divinely inspired and aligned. Happy New Year, dear Sag. This new moon highlights romance and creative projects, children, pets, and play, cooperation, boundaries and harmony in relationships with employees and colleagues and love partners, and overall spotlights your health and work-life balance. And it's all about bringing more fun, play, and improve mental health and cooperation into your life through your communication with colleagues and improved consistent use of supportive tools in your daily routines. Definitely take a look at the monthly horoscopes and the 2023 yearly uh, spiritual advice video here on the channel for you. They could provide a bit more uh, detail and some true encouragement regarding any sort of issues that you could be facing or have questions about related to romance and even your mental health and spirituality. Take good care. Happy New Year, dear Capricorns. So this new moon is all about new beginnings in your home and family life and important communications to heal and reconcile some trauma from a core experience that had a huge impact on you. This emphasis on home could also be about a deeper personal transformation in terms of feeling more at home in your body and sense of identity after healing core wounds and trauma and just being at a new space of confident self-expression and material and financial security. This focus on your house of home and family life could even indicate you buying a new home or new property or even beginning an entrepreneurial career in real estate. And if so, these things having long-term success. Dear Aquarius, this new moon shines a spotlight on the areas of your professional writing, teaching, publishing, communication, and fashion and appearance, and what they reveal about you and your values. There's a question here for you with this new moon about connecting to a new and improved, authentic, and original sense of voice that is not influenced by others, that is not influenced by the past, that is all about bringing in the new and you being accountable for the past and 
your image in terms of how you want to be seen and perceived in the world. And Aquarius, you all have just, you had Saturn in your sign all this time, and now you have Pluto entering your sign where it was in your 12th house, right? And, you know, there's been a lot transpiring for you all, and you all are in a deep, deep journey, right, of tests and uh, growth and evolution. So definitely take a look at all of the other videos here on the channel, the specific readings for your sign, but especially the Saturn and Pisces video and the Pluto and Aquarius video to understand a bit more about how to work with these energies and some spiritual advice and encouragement as you continue forward. Dear Pisces, Happy New Year. This new moon is about how you are undergoing personal transformation in identity, physical body, appearance, and spirituality. But it's also about how you stand out in a crowded marketplace with whatever it is that you offer as a service, a product, or that you publish, right? And these last two weeks of March could mean a powerful resolve and new beginning for you in finances and a venture. Your money could grow exponentially from launching a new marketing campaign or products or books or courses that emphasize some social value or the announcement of a tour or a travel opportunity. But there is absolutely a focus on expanding finances for you, given that you have Jupiter here and the sun, moon, and Mercury in your second house of finances and personal values. So take advantage of this blessed cosmic portal. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. Definitely leave a like for this video and check out the remaining videos here on the channel, particularly your March horoscopes and your Saturn in Pisces and Pluto in Aquarius personalized reading that offers some spiritual advice for how to work with the uh, changes in dynamic energy in the collective through these two big planetary transits. Okay, and definitely subscribe so that you can come back and join us here for our daily grace meditations. You'll find those in the shorts tab. And also post it on the community page. Stay tuned for your April horoscopes and additional readings. Happy New Year. Happy Aries season. And take good care of your hearts.